Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us right here on The Right View tonight. We are so excited. We're joined by the co-founders of The Whosoever's, Grammy-nominated artist and lead singer of P.O.D., Sonny Sandoval, and host of The Ryan Reese Show himself, the man, Ryan Reese. Sonny and Ryan, thank you so much for being here. Um, you know, we don't get a ton of musical artists on the right view. I um, I fancy myself, I, I guess, a musician. I play the piano. Sometimes they let me sing karaoke. I'm just going <laughs> to throw it out there to you guys, just in case something opens up on any front. You can just, like, let me know. Okay. Just saying. Um, but, Sonny, I, I, I want to start with you. Uh, you started your band in 1992. In 2001, your album Satellite came out with huge hits like Alive and Youth of the Nation. Um, is that kind of when you were like, wait a minute, I sort of feel like I've made it. This could be the big one here for me. I mean, obviously, with the success and popularity, it feels strange you know but it was never in the intent like I never thought I'd leave San Diego we were just playing music because we believed in it we believed that we had a voice through music and you know I think we followed through with our convictions and then people just started to like you know our band and before you knew it we just had more of a a, a platform yeah it's so funny because I feel like like the real ones are in it not uh, like you're saying not because you want to, you know, be famous yeah. or you're looking for anything. You just wanted to go play music and you just yeah. enjoyed yourself, right? Like that's, yeah. that's uh, the real it's, mark of it. It's not like that anymore. It's just, uh, there's such an agenda, you know what I mean? And it's yeah. fake. I mean, I mean, Hollywood is what it is. It's always been that way. We were just guys from the neighborhood that chose to play music instead of, you know, sell drugs, go to prison, you know, that, that type of thing. Good so choices. Yeah, yeah, good choices. <laughs> so we were trying, you know, we were trying to do something different, and uh, music was fun, you know. And like I said, it gave us a platform. But now it's a, it's a little different. Too much politics in 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 the music game. You can't you can't escape it. It's true, no. and and it's a different time, I think, for music because you know everything is. People aren't buying like albums anymore like no, these. No. people aren't going to a store which that's kind of sad like i remember the days where you used to walk into whatever the stores were and yeah. you could go in like the listening booths right i mean how yeah. old do i sound right now <laughs> but it's true and it's kind of sad now because everything i mean it's great because it's at your fingertips and we got the bluetooth connected yeah. in our car and we're good to go but do you kind of miss those days we're in a different era of course I miss those days. I mean, we're, we're blue collar musicians. I mean, we have to tour to make money now. You know, people don't see it as art or, you know, they don't abide by the copyright laws. You know what I mean? So our music is being used for corporations and ads and stuff like that, but they're not paying the musician for that. So, but, but, you know, the fans and, and the music listeners, they don't really understand all that stuff. So we're, we're just out here hustling. And again, I can do something else and probably make more money than be in a hardworking, you know, rock band. But again, it's, it's my passion and, and there's other reasons why I do this. You love it. I mean, that's, yeah. that's amazing. By the way, speaking of copyright, not to get off track here, <laughs> apparently unbeknownst to me, if you post something on social media and then you write the words from a song, not the whole song guys, but if you just write the words yeah. from a song, apparently that could be uh, a problem according to some people, and they will take your post off of Instagram, just putting it right. out there as a warning for people. Wow. So yeah. I didn't know that, but I found out recently. Um, Ryan, <laughs> you're the son of a pastor. I, I kind of feel like you were probably like a lot of uh, like preacher's kids I knew growing up. You kind of rebelled. You maybe <laughs> went the other way. Uh, but kind of give people your story and, and how you found your way back, because you've kind of done a, a 360 of sorts. Yeah, well, growing up in L.A., my, my brothers were all part of the music industry in, in uh, L.A. And, and growing up around that scene, I was always attracted to, to Hollywood and, and um, the forbidden fruit, if you will. I wanted to know what was <laughs> out there. But I always, you know, I always like to uh, I always know how to bring people together. I always had a lot of friends. I like to have a good time. And just got into, you know, throwing events in high school parties. Nice. And then that led to throwing raves in downtown L.A. And then that later on led to managing a professional skateboard team and producing music festivals. So wow. basically wow. everything that mom and dad were kind of trying to veer me away from, <laughs> uh, a lot of the doors opened up for me in, in, in a great way. And 
Um, that basically led to me uh, really dealing with, you know, going through uh, several abortions, getting married, divorced. Uh, I was just thinking about it the other day. It led me to feeling depressed, lonely, and all these different emotions, uh, very similar to what a lot of people are dealing with today with the whole mental health thing. But um, I just decided to numb myself with with girls' money and pornography and, and drugs and uh, leading me to uh, Odin in a hotel room in, in Panama wow. City on my last skateboard tours um, when about 33 years old. So I was living that life for about 20 years and um, just – decided to see if there was a God, if he had a plan for me and um, just wanted to get rid of this, this hopelessness. And my whole life changed when I said, uh, like Sonny would say, uh, a big boy prayer in that hotel room. And I said, God, prove that you're real and changed my life. And literally there was a supernatural event that happened that day. Um, uh, there was just this transaction that happened that God touched my life and literally took away the drugs and alcohol and all the anxiety and depression and all these things I was struggling with for years, just overnight. And then that's when I knew it was real. And I just had to see if there was more, what do you want to do with my life at that point? Wow. I mean, I just got chills as you're telling the story. That's amazing. That yeah. must've been hard though, um, for your, your family, given, you know, your, your father was a pastor. Mm -hmm. uh, how, I mean, have you talked with your family about this? That must've been a really tough time for them to see you kind of, veer away from from how they raised you in so many respects but not be able to to kind of pull you back on their own you had to find your own way and i think a lot of people probably struggle with that i mean having two young kids myself uh, you know i think about it all the time you can yeah. teach your kids certain mm -hmm. things and and try to structure their lives a certain way but once they get old enough they're going to decide how they want to live their lives how was all of that for your family well, the one cool thing is, is, you know, Sonny is good friends with my my dad as well. We've all become real good friends over the years. But uh, my dad, he came from a very radical background as well. Um, but he never judged me. He was always – he always just kind of tried to point me on the right track. Like, hey, God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for your life. And I'm thinking – I'm, I mean, I met Sonny back then. I mean, I was living the dream. Like, what, what's God going to do with my life? I'm kind of like living like what people want to live, you know? Um, but God had such a bigger plan. But he never judged me. So that day when I got back from Panama City, Central America, on that skateboard tour, I called him and just said I gave my life to God in a hotel room. And, um, you know, he was just like, listen, get a Bible read it, get plugged in church and, and God's going to show you what to do. And right at that time, I actually called Sonny uh, and I told him, you know, I'm leaving my, my job at Circle Footwear, managing the professional skateboard team and doing music festivals. Wow. And I'm going to see what God, you know, I'm chilling at my dad's church mm -hmm. to see what he wants, what God wants to do in my life. And that's basically where Sonny's journey and mine began with the Whosoever's movement. Wow. Yeah. So I, I want to find out about that, but you guys have known each other for a long time. How did you first meet? How'd you first get connected? Yeah. Well, Sonny, uh, there was this, there's this, one of our friends, uh, named Michael Guido. Uh, he works with a lot of different bands and brings spiritual truth to them. He goes on tour with them backstage and just kind of encourages them. As we all know, musicians need, uh, encouraging as well. And <laughs> everyone needs just, it every, oh, from now on yes. every now and again. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Everyone does. And I happened to be, I was traveling nine months out of the year globally, right? Touring. And I happened to be in San Clemente at our office and I get a phone call. Hey, this is Michael. I'm with Sonny from POD. We're in San Clemente. We're driving on the five freeway. Can we stop by your office? And I'm like, I'm in town. This is a miracle. Oh. I want wow. the circuit gear. <laughs> yeah, they showed up and I gave them a bunch of free product. And then that's when um, the connection started. And I don't even know what year that you you guys were like, like this is when when this is during that era when they were like on TV yeah. every single day of the week, every minute explosion with POD. Yeah. Wow. And yeah. OK, so obviously you guys, you, you met way back when and then fast forward Tell me about the whosoever's, how that came about, and what you guys do. Well, yeah, well, go for it, Sonny. Like when, what Ryan said, when I met him, he was he was pretty much in a bad place, and I, I kind of knew it and I sensed it. And then when he when he did call me, like he said, and he said, "Hey, you know, I'm I'm helping my dad out and stuff." He didn't say, you know, he wasn't all super religious and spiritual. I just knew that something had happened, and so I said, "Dude, let, let's hook up. You know, let's let's walk with each other." 
And as we started to walk with each other, I was going through my own stuff. But, you know, I, I had been a Christian for a long time and I, I battle with the institution of church and Christianity and all that stuff. And because I'm just I'm just a realist, you know, and I live in the real world. I, I work with in the real world and just trying to love God and stay straight, you know. And so, you know, Ryan and I got together and it was. I was tired of defending the institution of Christianity. I just wanted it to be, I love Jesus. I love God. He's, he's, he's amazing. You know, he's changed our lives. And Ryan needed that too, because we came from the, you know, the same world and we connected with guys like, you know, um, Brian Head Welch from Corn and guys in the metal militia, Lacey from Flyleaf. And we didn't want another institution. We just wanted a brotherhood, a sisterhood where we can say, Hey, this is what I'm going through. I'm, I'm struggling with this or stuff they don't like to talk about in the church, you know, but, Hey man, I'm 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 in rock and roll. You know, we see stuff all the time, and I'm trying to stay focused. And so we formed more of a brotherhood, sisterhood. But then as that grew, we just got the opportunities to start going into you know schools and and rehabs and detention centers and and boys and girls clubs and homes. And we just started sharing our story. You know, your average pastor can't go in these places and and share the gospel, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, that's amazing. You know. But they see guys like us and they're like, man, those guys are messed up like me. <laughs> they, their, their story is pretty incredible. And if God can do good things in their life and use them, then maybe he can do that with me. And so we just it just translates a little easier. You know, we just relate a little bit more. We're, we're still in the industry. We're still from the streets. And so we're a little bit more relatable than, you know, your megastar pastor or, you know, no disrespect. Yeah, I, but I think it's it's really amazing to see how upfront you guys are with your your beliefs and with your Christianity because I feel like there's there's it it feels I think to a lot of people like that's something that n- people aren't supposed to talk about in a, in a way that they they really did you know a couple of decades ago maybe yeah. even it's very different now is is it harder today do you think? Um, for for you guys to kind of be so open with this as musicians, I mean, where do you think things are in really the country, but the world as it relates to spirituality? I mean, we, you know, obviously being in the music industry, we we walk the line of just you know in that art world because obviously you know we do live in a, a cancel culture, you know what I mean? But yeah. when you're so you know the moment, but we we already know that because of scripture. Jesus said, you know, if the world hates you, it's because they hated me first. So I already know this, my mindset going into this. So I know how to, you know, function and and just be relatable. But when it comes to one on ones and these kids, they're looking for hope. They they yeah. don't want they don't want anything else. They don't want the watered down truth. So when we go into detention centers or rehabs where these kids are, you know, they're they're the end of their life possibly. And so when we just give them the raw gospel truth and hope in, in, in a tangible way that says, hey, I'm, I'm no spiritual giant. I'm no, I'm no perfect Christian. I don't got it figured out, but I'm walking with God. I'm trusting God. These kids want it. They don't want it watered down. But, yeah. you know, social media in the world, it's a whole nother game. And unfortunately, there's too many so-called believers out there that have painted a picture of Christianity and Christ that is that is false. And mm-hmm. so it's a, it's kind of a, a, an illusion, you know? So we just give these kids the, the straight to the truth and that's what they want. Yeah. And you know what? I feel like they really obviously can see themselves in a way in you guys, you're very relatable to them, mm-hmm. obviously. And I, I'm sure they say, wow, I never, I never thought that I could see someone who I could relate li- with like this saying these things to me. What's the reaction, um, Ryan, like when you guys go there, you, you talk to these kids or, or people who really are struggling or, you know, at the end of, of their rope, uh, so to speak, what kind of response do you get? Well, there's, there's, there's different, there's different avenues that we go down. Like one is like, there's when we're on tour, like we tour all over the world and we, we, the main focus is we go into the public school system because that's, that's the battleground. When the movement started, what Sonny's referring to is, we were like, hey, we'll go wherever people will have us. So it happened to open up in like rehabs or like juvenile detention centers. But then as as God started kind of fine tuning our mission, we we kind of did like a brainstorm, like, wait a minute, why do we do this? And we're like, well, we want to reach kids or we want to reach people that so they don't make the same decisions. Everyone has a free will to do what they want. But maybe if we could just get in front of them before they end up in jail or end up in yeah. rehab or end up getting their girl pregnant or yeah. end up depressed or suicidal or taking their life, which is so common these days or battling with anxiety or self-harm or their sexual identity 
whatever it be, if we could just get in front of them and let them know, hey, there is a God. His name is Jesus Christ. He died on the cross 2,000 years ago. He loves you. He wants to forgive you. And he, not only that, he'll give you the power from the Holy Spirit that will give you the power to overcome and to destroy what is destroying you. And if we could just get in front of them and let them know this message, yeah. and they're open to it. Like, you know, Christianity now, it's like it's 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 almost like punk rock because it goes against the whole world system of what yeah. is being programmed to us and these students that were in front of, like, I just got back from the Philippines two days ago. And, um, you know, when I, it, it's, it's like when you're fishing for, when you're, when you're fishing, there's different kinds of fish, right? There's deep sea fishing, there's bass fishing, there's lake fishing, there's ice fishing. And what I realized is, you know, I can meet, there's different kinds of bait as you, as you cast out for these different people. And what I found out the the bait that works for everyone is, what we've all gone through. We've all been hurt. We've all felt hopeless at times. We've all dealt with maybe depression or bad relationships or, you know, all these different things. So when we go and tell these students, whether they're in junior high, high school, college universities, we let them know like wherever they're at, they're not alone. God loves them. He sees them and he wants to forgive them of their sins. And they all know that they're sinners because we all know we're sinners. We all, my, my, I have triplet daughters that are seven years old. Okay. And, and they've been, they've been, you know, fighting over candy and stuff from a very young age. Mine, mine, mine. Like we just have that, that bad heart in us. We're born with that, but God wants to come alongside with us. He created us. He designed us all those gifts and talents that we have in us. He wants to use us for greatness, you know, and if we could just come into a relationship with them, there is hope. We don't have to go through life depressed. We don't have to go through life suicidal. We don't have to go through life addicted. We don't have to live the life that we grew up in with maybe with our parents that are divorced or split. Like God is in the business of transforming lives. And that's my story is God took a guy like me, an ordinary guy like me, and he literally flipped me upside down and changed my whole life from the things that I lived but now he's giving me purpose and my identity is in him. And that's where you get your confidence. That's where you have hope. That's where you have peace. That's where you have joy. And that's where you find your purpose. And students are all about it. They want that. That's what, yeah. the, that's mm -hmm. what people are looking for love globally. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and God is love. Yep. So it's so such a great point. And you know, the interesting thing is I, um, I, I have some friends who, have gone through, and I guess you never stop going through AA. And one of the things that I found very fascinating listening to them talk about their experience there is that there is always this drive to find something higher than yourself. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes what they've told me is that a lot of people go to AA, go through a 12-step program like that, and they come out on the other side, you know, really finding a relationship with God that they, they mm -hmm. really didn't have before that but it's so fascinating because you're right you don't have to go through life miserable or addicted or depressed or whatever it is um and it's great that you guys are allowing you know younger people to to get this message because man the message is out there driven towards our youth in the, yeah. the world at this point uh, are very different than that. And it's very frightening, I think, right now to be a parent and to think about what what is my kid learning out there? What are they getting from social media, from yeah. Hollywood, from all of it? And I mean, kudos to you guys for stepping up to the plate and saying, here's a different message and here's a different path for you if this is something you want to take. We are, are proof positive that, you know, this is this is a great path forward in life and um, and afterlife for that matter, right? Um, Sonny, Sonny, tell us about the Youth of the Nation Foundation and how people can find out more. Yeah, it's um, youthofthenationfoundation.com. And obviously, Ryan and I have done a lot more ministry stuff, and we've been able to travel and get in front of kids all over the place. But this was something I wanted to do in my my own community, in my own neighborhood. And obviously, it's it's more kind of like a, a, a YMCA, but music and art, you know, where we can give these kids the best. We can teach them, um, you know, art and music and just give them a different avenue. Like I said before, you know, our, our options of getting out of out of the hood, um, you know, but in my my neighborhood, that's the long term plan, I guess. But in my neighborhood, there's no real estate. You know what I mean? So luckily, I think, you know, God opened up a door where I just partnered with the YMCA that's right in the neighborhood that I grew up in. 
And now we're talking about, you know, kind of rebranding and rebuilding, um, you know, and, and building, they're gonna, they might give me a room for a teen center and they're gonna give me a few of their rooms to start, you know, guitar lessons and art classes and stuff like that. And, and I also wanna raise scholarships where these kids can, they can use the exercise room. They can go and swim in the pool without paying a thousand dollars a month to do it. You know what I mean? These kids can't afford it. So we're just, we're just creating ways. We do things outside of the community as well, but mostly I've just been focusing on the kids that, you know, are from, from my neighborhood. Wow. What is, isn't it the Young Men's Christian Association? Isn't that what YMCA stands for? That's what it for? started at. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's nice that, by the way, that they're, they're you know, yeah. kind of u- utilizing the Christian part of this and, 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 you know, allowing you to do that. That's very cool. Um, and Ryan, you just mentioned this and it's slightly off topic, but tell us what it's like not only having triplets who you just <laughs> referenced, but another kid on top of it. I mean, what's going on over there? <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I got so, two. That's enough. I mean, I got a lot going on already. No, no one told me that having three <laughs> babies at one time. Yeah, we um, yeah, it's 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 radical. You know, we we got pregnant with fraternal twins, and then we went back to the doctor on our second appointment. And I made a joke to the doctor, and I said, "What is that?" And he says, "There's another one in there." Oh well, the my eggs, god! The eggs put identical twins. <laughs> And the rest is history. So I have triplet daughters, two identical twin blonde and brunette, or two identical twin blondes with blue eyes, and I have a brunette, uh, Evelyn, Lillian, and Sadie Lynn. And they're Aww. they're seven years old, and they're awesome. They like to party. And then I have a son, <laughs> Asher. Um, he's three years old. So we are uh, we are very uh, active at our house. Yeah. <laughs> Nicely I'm put. Of, we I'm- understand. I'm out of the baby young kid stage. So I'm, I, I get to enjoy life a little bit again. I got kids out of college, in college. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Me and my wife are having fun again. <laughs> well, we've got them on all different ends of the scale yeah. here. Here, mine are, are three and five. Okay. And then, Ryan, you've got three seven year olds and a three year old. And, Sonny, how old are your kids? My oldest, she just turned 23. My Marley's in college in Hawaii. She's going to be 19. And my son, Justice is going to be 16. Oh my gosh. So cool. Well, I mean, kids are the greatest. And I mean, that's why we do all of this, right? What I, what do the kids think? I mean, I guess, Sonny, I'll ask you since yours are older, uh, of what their dad does. I mean, I I never bought into it. You know what I mean? So they, they don't, they they see, they see through all this. Yeah. It's just dad. They see through all the smoke screen, but you know, I, I've, I've been with my wife since high school before all of this stuff. And so we, we, we know what's real. We know what's true. And we know, you know, the game to play out here. And so they watch it. And, um, but I don't think they care about that stuff. They care that, that I love God, that I love their, their mommy. And then I love them, you know, and I, and I love people and they see that above all of it. So they're, they're good kids. I'm, I'm super lucky. Are any of them musicians? My son justice is, yeah, he's in a little local band and they just, you know, they're, they're goofing around trying to figure it out. And, yeah, my other kids, Marley's an athlete, Nevaeh, she's a, uh, an artist, and it's cool stuff. <laughs> I mean, the kids are fun. And Ryan, I mean, yours are younger, but I don't know. <laughs> what, what age is it? Right, I started playing the piano when I was like 10. And mm. I'm, I'm thinking my kids are young, but I mean, do any of your kids play any instruments? Are they musical, Ryan? Is it right, too early? Right, right now, they're... Uh... Right now, they've just been active. Like we're out, like going to skate parks. We're going to, you know, to the mountains in the snow, and just they're just real active right now. Nothing. They have. We have all the instruments. We got the drum machine. We got the ukuleles. <laughs> we got everything. There's there. no excuse. Everything's available. <laughs> we have. Yeah. We have the loft is built out. So I'm like, I'm basically like, what do you guys want to do? You know? <laughs> yeah, they'll figure it out. Right. Here. Pick. <laughs> Well, we'll we're check. We'll check back everything. on all that. That's the best. Yeah. They should be. They just let them let them do what they enjoy and love. That's do you great. guys have uh, like a tour coming up? How can people see you or find out more? I mean, tell people yeah. what they need to know. Go to uh, go to the whosoevers dot com and we uh, we post our tours. Um, trying to think, we just got back from the Philippines. Uh, can't think off the top of my head, but we're constantly touring globally into the public school system. Middle school, high school, colleges, universities. Um, we, I mean, we've been in front of hundreds of thousands of, of, of students uh, for, over the last eight years, plus our big music festival. So we just, we're just going to keep getting in front of kids and letting them know God ha- loves them and has a plan for them. And we are, we are we, I mean, if we had more time, we could talk about all the, the different success stories of 
one kid that was suicidal that came across us, got saved, and now he's a he's a doctor. And then this other kid, he's wow. a, got a full scholarship to Stanford for wrestling. So these are there's many many one yeah, girl that was struggling with her sexual identity that now is part of the whosoever's movement. She was depressed, suicidal, uh, and and she had an encounter with God. She has a TED talk out. Just many many uh, amazing stories that the whosoever's movement has impacted um but that's a whole nother whole nother yeah. show <laughs> for the next for the next show do do schools reach out to you guys like if there's someone right now watching from a you know a school somewhere across the country do yeah. they reach out and, and is that how it uh, how it works so so the way it works is we go in if it's if it's out of america the school like we we went into the philippines to the mayor of manila he opened the door for us to go to the yeah. schools we work wow. with different mayors and governments all through mexico uh, but in California, or I'm sorry, in United States, we go in through the Christian club and we get the assembly and it's not mandatory, but we're still filling the, the assemblies completely, uh, everywhere we go. And then, or it could be a principal, it could be a teacher, it could be someone that works on campus that can invite us, but all roads lead to the Christian club. And then that gives us free, uh, so we could have, if we go through the Christian club, that means we'll get the gymnasium and anyone that walks through the door, we could talk about whatever we want. Just like there's the church yeah. of Satan. There's the, the Catholic club. There's the LGBTQ, yeah. the, all the atheist club. Everyone could talk about what they want because they get a room. And then when you walk in by choice, whatever said in there is said in there. So that's how we're doing it. But like I said, we're filling gymnasiums uh, globally. So it, that well, doesn't we, We've also been in, in schools where the principals and the teachers, they, they, they understand the rules and, hey, you can't say this, you can't say that, you know, but, but because they're, they're so invested in their kids and they see what the kids are going through, they, even they've kind of thrown their hands up like, hey, you, we need anything for these kids. Wow. Come in here and, and love these kids. Like they're, they're almost willing to, some of them are willing to risk their jobs to, for us to go in there and share the gospel because they care more about the kids then they do what you cannot say and you know what you can say because they see these kids on the daily and they're like these kids need hope and so yeah. when we go in that's that is just what we want to give them is hope you know that's yep. so good it's so needed i feel like i wish you guys could go to every public school <laughs> in america okay. i mean honestly look now is it's a it's a crazy time there's so much influence that feels i mean a lot of it feels very um, foreign to so many people, and yeah. there's there's just a lot coming at kids these days. And so I think it would be awesome if you guys could go in and really give them sort of another yeah. another view on things. But um, keep doing what you do. It's it's really well, inspiring and amazing and so needed right now. Um, God bless both of you guys. Uh, keep up, keep up the great work. Yeah, and and let's do it again. We'll talk about the the incredible stories that you guys have because yeah. I'm sure you've you've seen a lot. You've been a lot of places, and um, it must be such an incredible feeling to know that you're truly touching people's lives in this way and changing their lives um, in such a positive way. So, Sunny and Ryan, thanks for all you do. Thanks for being for here sure. on The Right View. Um, to everybody at home, as always, make sure you like, subscribe, follow, and we'll see you back here next time for more of The Right View. At The Right View, uh, we're very proud of the fact that we are independent. We get to say everything that we think and everything that we feel. We have no woke companies guiding us or telling us what we can and cannot say. We are always going to shoot you straight and give you the facts as we know them. And that's why it's important to support independent uh, outlets like The Right View. My name is Lara Trump, and I think Mike Lindell is a patriot. He is someone who loves this country, is willing to fight for this country. Um, I love my pillow because not only are my pillows made in the USA by American workers, uh, but they're great products and they're so great that not only do I use them in my own bed at night, my children actually requested my daughter the other day went to the closet and pulled out a my pillow and said this is the pillow that i want to sleep with and i gotta tell you she loves it and will have nothing to do with any other pillow so it's a big hit around our house my dogs also 
uh, happened to sleep on my pillow dog beds. So all around the Trump household, we're big fans. If you go to mypillow.com today and use promo code Trump, again, promo code Trump, you will not only save money, but you will help us continue this show and other shows like it and help us continue the fight for the future of America. Inflation has impacted all of our lives. I don't think anyone can go to the gas pump or the grocery store without noticing that it is a major factor. And unfortunately, it's not going anywhere. It doesn't seem like it's going down in the way that we would like it to. And one way to protect your money is by investing in precious metals, uh, gold and silver. That's always been a great way to make sure that you keep your money and you keep it safe. When you go to bh-pm.com, use promo code TRUMP. That way, if you decide you want to invest in gold and silver, you'll save yourself a little bit of money. We live in a time that's very interesting. A lot of us out there feel like a lot of our rights are slipping away. And if you're like I am and you want to have the right to choose whether or not to have a vaccine, how to live your life freely, and you're looking for a great doctor, I've heard amazing things about Dr. Sherwood. He's somebody who you should really check out and check into, um, and it'll help support this program and keep us going. So go to Sherwood.tv and use promo code Trump. Again, Sherwood.tv and use promo code Trump. You can save yourself some money and help us keep our program going. Ladies and gentlemen, this just in. We'll keep this a little secret between you and me and them and everybody. Whoa. The people that are actually at the tip of the spear, working directly with President Trump on a day-to-day -day basis to save this nation, they're all joining us on the Reawaken America tour. We have Pre President Donald J. Trump's Chief of Staff, Akash Patel. We've got Peter Navarro's joined us on the tour. We have General Michael Flynn. We have Eric Trump. The people actually working at the tip of the spear with President Donald J. Trump to save America are joining us on the Reawaken America tour. Whoa. If word of this gets out, if the truth about election fraud, medical fraud, religious fraud, monetary fraud, and mainstream media gets out, it may just save the nation. The Reawaken tour is coming to our place, hallelujah. It's going to be lit. It's going to be lit. Yeah, it's going to be lit. Wide slam open. And now, ladies and gentlemen, on May 12th and 13th, the Reawaken America Tour is coming to Miami, Florida, and to the beautiful Trump Doral Resort and Golf Course. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, the Reawaken America Tour is coming to Miami, Florida on May 12th and 13th. Get your sunscreen ready because General Flynn, Mike Lindell, Amanda Grace, Julie Green, Pastor Dave Scarlett, Dr. Judy Mikevitz, Cash Patel, and Team America are taking the Reawaken America Tour to Trump Doral on May 12th and 13th. And then we're taking the God-fearing revival Bible starting Reawaken America Tour into Sin City. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are taking the God-fearing Reawaken America Tour to Las Vegas, Nevada on August 25th and 26th. General Flynn and Team America will be taking the Reawaken America Tour to Las Vegas, Nevada. And the Patriots will be staying together at Trump International Hotel Las Vegas, located at 2000 Fashion Show Drive, Las Vegas, Nevada, with zip code 89109 if you want to send them a letter. And yes, Alex Jones will be live and in person at the Reawaken America Tour, Las Vegas, Nevada. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, put it on your calendar. Get those tickets right now. August 25th and 26th, Eric Trump, Dr. Peter McCullough, Mel Kay, Dr. Stella Emanuel, Owen Schroyer, Alex Jones, Seth Holhouse, Pastor Mark Burns, Pastor Leon Benjamin. We're all taking the Reawaken America Tour to Las Vegas, Nevada, ladies and gentlemen. Las Vegas, Nevada. And that's going to be August 25th and 26th. Thus far on the Reawaken America Tour, we've featured Dr. Dave Martin, the late great Dr. Vladimir Zelenko, Charlie Kirk, Donna Clement Petruska, Sean Foyt, Karen Kingston, Chad Prather, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., Dr. Alan Keyes, Mickey Willis, Roger Stone, Dr. Richard Bartlett, and hundreds of patriotic speakers that you know, including Del Bigtree, Thomas Renz, Sidney Powell, Jim Caviezel, Donald J. Trump Jr., Peter Navarro, Klaus Schwab, Yuval Noah Harari, Bill Gates, and the godless globalists have their annual meeting called the World Economic Forum at Davos. But we that reject the Great Reset have the Reawaken America Tour coming to Miami, Florida and coming to Las Vegas, Nevada. Get those tickets at time2freeamerica.com. That's time2freeamerica.com. We have scholarship pricing to make these events affordable for everybody. Every Reawaken America Tour event has sold out, so request those tickets today at time2freeamerica.com. That's time2freeamerica.com. Or for faster service, you can send me a personal text to 
918-851-0102. That's 918-851-0102. And to be bilingually sensitive, that's 918-851-0102. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the go, you know the you know the thing. We will shut you down, we will cite you, and if we need to, we will arrest you and we will take you to jail. Period. I wasn't thinking of the Bill of Rights when we did this. But no amendment, no amendment to the Constitution is absolute. God actually spoke to me. He spoke about sacredness. He said to me, Kim, what I place in many, many people is sacred. And if anybody touches what is sacred to me, then it is the end for them. So what I've done in the United States of America is sacred. And there are people on every side that are trying to destroy what I deem sacred. And it's not going to happen. This is the definition of criminal conspiracy, racketeering, and collusion. This is not a theory, this is evidence. Because I have upheld this country to spread the light to the rest of the world. When you choose to go against the sacred thing that God puts into the very heart and the soil of this nation, this was sacred to God. Now is the time to act. This is exactly why I need some action for my people. Hello, everybody. It's an honor to be with you.